It's time for the biggest, baddest monster of them all. Just don't let King Kong hear you say that. It's Godzilla time. We start with the original live action movie from 1954. This may be 70 years old, but it's still regarded as a defining moment in the monster movie genre. As Godzilla emerges from the depths, it begins to wreak havoc on Japan, causing widespread destruction and panic. The film revolves around the efforts of scientists, military personnel, and civilians to find a way to stop Godzilla and prevent further devastation. The narrative explores the consequences of nuclear weapons and serves as an allegory for the fears and anxieties surrounding the atomic age. The original Japanese name for the movie and monster was Gojira, which is a combination of gorilla and kujira, which is the Japanese word for whale. However, Gojira looks mainly reptilian, which has remained the case ever since. The effects may be dated, but this is a defining moment and still holds up today. In 1955, Godzilla was back, and this time, he brought company. In his second live-action movie, scouting pilots for a fishing fleet are taken aback when they stumble upon a new creature named Anguidus accompanying a second Godzilla. In 1962, Godzilla would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his most famous adversary for the first time. In the original King Kong vs. Godzilla, directed by kaiju godfather Ishiro Honda himself, a pharmaceutical company seeking to boost their ratings captured King Kong from a remote island and brought him to Japan. At the same time, Godzilla, who was trapped in an iceberg, is accidentally freed and heads toward Japan. The two iconic monsters eventually clash in epic battles that wreak havoc on the country. The showdown between King Kong and Godzilla is a highlight, showcasing the clash of two legendary creatures in a battle for supremacy. This was the first Godzilla film shot in color, marking a significant departure from the black and white cinematography of the earlier movies. Godzilla also had a meaner look in this one. As the roster of kaijus grew to include Mothra, it was only a matter of time before Godzilla would have to face off against the giant moth. That matchup came in 1964 with Mothra vs. Godzilla. Godzilla's design underwent further refinements, with the creature maintaining a more streamlined and menacing appearance. In 1964, we got the introduction of the iconic King Ghidorah, a monstrous three-headed beast and the first time Godzilla teams up with other monsters to face a common threat, with Rodan siding with Godzilla to take on Ghidorah in this one. That was followed up in 1965 with Invasion of the Astro Monster, which contained Godzilla's iconic victory dance, and featured Godzilla and Rodan heading off to an alien world to battle Ghidorah, which turned out to be an alien creature. Things went from aliens to monster crabs in the next year, as Godzilla battled the giant crustacean Ebera in Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. This movie showcased more agile and acrobatic movements for Godzilla to make fights more unique and entertaining. There was a shift towards a more family-friendly tone in 1967 with the release of Son of Godzilla, which introduced Manila, the son of the legendary monster for the first time. Ishiro Honda is a legend of a genre, but Destroy All Monsters in 1968 was the last Godzilla film he directed in the Showa era. Celebrated for its ensemble of monsters and epic battles, Destroy All Monsters is a fan favorite from the Showa era and was perfect for Honda bowing out. In 
all monsters attack from 1969, a young boy dreams of befriending Manila and learns lessons about courage and self-reliance. This one was a departure from the style of the earlier Godzilla movies with a more child-centric storyline, emphasizing a moral lesson about courage, making this a family-friendly Godzilla event. The themes continued to change in 1971 when Godzilla took on Hedorah, a pollution-spawned monster in a battle highlighting environmental concerns. This film was indicative of the time, with psychedelic themes consistent with the social movements of the era. In Godzilla vs. Gigan in 72, Godzilla and Anguirus team up to defend Earth from the space monsters Gigan and King Ghidorah being controlled by aliens. This was the first time we saw Gigan and more emphasis to be put on alien invasions, rather than the original roster of monsters that originated here on Earth. There was a tag team for the ages in 1973 Godzilla teams up with Jet Jaguar to face Megalon and Gigan, unleashed by underground dwelling aliens in Godzilla vs. Megalon. The reliance on extraterrestrial threats to provide Godzilla's foes becomes very apparent here. In 73, we also got Zone Fighter, a TV series featuring Godzilla with a serialized format, showcasing more frequent monster battles. Whilst the series was focused on Zone Fighter rather than Godzilla, Godzilla did feature, helping Zone Fighter defeat kaiju threats in the show. Moving on from alien-controlled kaijus, things turned to robotic clones of Godzilla in 1974 as the main threat moved to Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla faced a robotic imposter created by aliens intent on world domination. The Showa era then came to an end in 1975, marking the end of an iconic run of movies. Terror of Mechagodzilla was the last. This movie introduced Titanosaurus and explored Godzilla's more sympathetic side. Godzilla confronts both Titanosaurus and the rebuilt Mechagodzilla in a battle against evil scientists. It would be nine years until Godzilla would make a comeback. In 1984, the Heisei era began with the return of Godzilla. Godzilla's design in this film was updated to reflect a more menacing and realistic appearance. The color scheme was darker, and overall Godzilla was made to look more like a monster than ever before with the use of special effects that were now available. Godzilla's iconic roar was also modernized for this film, enhancing the auditory experience and adding to the creature's imposing presence. The return of Godzilla is often praised for revitalizing the franchise and setting the stage for the Heisei series which continued to explore complex storylines and themes while showcasing Godzilla as a powerful and formidable force on his own, without other kaijus on screen. And it still captured the anti-nuclear themes that were present in the original Gojira movie back in 1954. The next entry in the High Sea era, Godzilla vs. Biollante, continued the revitalization of the franchise. The film explores themes of bioengineering and genetic manipulation. Godzilla's cells, recovered from the aftermath of the previous film, become a focal point for scientific experimentation. Biollante, a unique and complex kaiju, is created as a result of combining Godzilla's cells with those of a rose and a human. This monstrous hybrid becomes a formidable adversary for Godzilla. The film also introduced Miki Saigusa, 
who possesses psychic abilities. Her connection to Godzilla would become a recurring theme in subsequent Heisei era films. Godzilla's looks was also further refined for this film, showcasing improved articulation and detailing. It still retained the darker and more menacing aesthetic introduced in The Return of Godzilla. The destruction scenes were also presented with a heightened sense of realism, utilizing practical effects and miniature sets to portray the devastation caused by the kaiju battles. The first two movies after Heisei took on the mantle really got the franchise back to its best. In Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, which released in 1991, time travelers seek to erase Godzilla from history, but inadvertently create the powerful King Ghidorah. This provided a fresh and fleshed out backstory for King Ghidorah, one of the iconic adversaries of Godzilla. Then in 1992, Heisei brought back more kaijus to throw down with Godzilla. In this movie, Godzilla clashes with Mothra and Batra, ancient protectors of Earth in a battle to save Japan. Emphasis was being placed on Godzilla's foes to give them more personality and backstory, which made Godzilla's own role more defined. A year later, a new Mechagodzilla was introduced in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Mechagodzilla is rebuilt to protect humanity from the kaiju threat, but Godzilla stands in its way in an epic battle. In Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, released in 94, Godzilla battles an extraterrestrial clone threatening Earth as an alien invader, which Godzilla must defeat to save humanity. Godzilla vs. Destroya from 1995 was a poignant finale to the Heisei series, featuring Godzilla's meltdown due to a buildup of nuclear energy in his body and the birth of Destroya. This ultimate adversary began as a microscopic organism mutated by the Oxygen Destroyer, the weapon used to defeat the original Godzilla in 1954. Over time, these organisms evolve into a powerful and destructive kaiju. As Godzilla's nuclear meltdown progresses, he undergoes a transformation into Burning Godzilla. This form is characterized by glowing red-orange skin and represents the intense heat generated by the impending meltdown. This is the perfect way to sign off from the Heisei era of movies. Between the end of the Heisei run of movies and the next installment in the franchise, Godzilla Island bridged the gap. Unlike traditional live-action Godzilla films, Godzilla Island is unique in that it is a tokusatsu show created using action figures and dioramas. The series consists of short three-minute episodes that were produced in a serialized form. Godzilla Island was primarily produced for Japanese audiences and had limited availability outside Japan. Due to its short episode length and unique format, it developed a niche following among fans. The next stop for Godzilla was to Hollywood. A film simply titled Godzilla was released in 1998 directed by Roland Emmerich, and this serves as a reimagining of the iconic Japanese Godzilla franchise, and certainly has its own twist and feel on the iconic monster. This included the first time CGI was used to animate Godzilla over practical effects that had previously been used. Unlike the traditional Godzilla origin where the creature is a result of nuclear testing, this Godzilla is a mutated iguana caused by nuclear testing in the Pacific. The film is set in New York City, where Godzilla wreaks havoc while the military and a group of scientists led by Dr. Nico Tatopoulos try to stop the monster. Godzilla is depicted as reproducing asexually and laying eggs in Madison Square Garden. The offspring, known as baby Godzillas or Zillas, pose an additional threat. The design of the Godzilla creature is significantly different from the traditional Toho Godzilla. 
This version has a more slender and agile appearance, standing upright with a long neck and smaller dorsal plates, created digitally using cutting-edge Hollywood effects. The redesign of Godzilla sparked controversy and disappointment among fans of the original Toho Godzilla. The creature's departure from its traditional look was a point of contention. Despite being a complete departure from the source material, it was a commercial hit, grossing over $379 million worldwide, with music from Jamiro Kwai helping boost the mass appeal of this first Hollywood Godzilla movie. Plans for a sequel were in development, but due to the mixed critical reception and disagreements between the filmmakers and the studio, the planned sequel was ultimately scrapped. Toho, the studio behind the original series, didn't like the changes Hollywood made to their most cherished creation. They made their own reboot called Godzilla 2000 in 1999, where Godzilla battles an ancient alien creature, Orga, aiming to assimilate Earth. This pushed the Hollywood franchise into its own continuity and re-established the classic theme and style, signaling a series of re-releases retelling classic Godzilla-led stories. That continued in 2000 with Godzilla vs. Megagyrus. In this one, Godzilla confronts giant insect queen in a battle for supremacy. Godzilla then faced off against Mothra, King Ghidorah, and Baragon in a battle for Japan's survival in Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah giant monsters all-out attack in 2001. The flurry of Toho releases continued with Godzilla against Mechagodzilla in 2002. Japan constructs a Mechagodzilla to defend against Godzilla's return, resulting in a classic showdown fans couldn't wait to see once again on screen. Then, Mechagodzilla and Mothra united to protect Japan from Godzilla's wrath in the follow-up Godzilla Tokyo SOS in 2003. Godzilla Final Wars brought this new series to a close in 2004, with Godzilla battling a plethora of monsters, concluding the Millennium series. Whilst it was great that Toho were able to take back control, they weren't really doing anything new with their Millennium series, and after releasing so many movies so quickly, burnout was real. It was time for Hollywood to have another shot. Directed by Gareth Edwards, Godzilla released in 2014. It's a total reboot. The film introduces a new origin for Godzilla, portraying him as an ancient alpha predator that awakens to restore balance to nature. Additionally, the film introduces MUTOs, short for Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organisms, creatures feeding on nuclear energy and threatening humanity. The film explores the theme of humanity's relationship with nature, especially its use of nuclear energy and the consequences that arise when disrupting the natural order. The film emphasizes the sheer scale of Godzilla, showcasing the creature in a more realistic manner compared to previous American adaptations. The sense of scale is used to highlight the awe-inspiring nature of the monster. With a star-studded cast including Brian Cranston, this reboot made amends for the first Hollywood movie, which was a bust with Godzilla fans. The film was a commercial success, grossing over $529 million worldwide, and it opened the idea of a monsterverse, including other iconic monsters like King Kong, paving the way for that classic matchup on screen in modern cinema. With the success of the more traditional style Hollywood movie, Shin Godzilla, released in 2016, provides a new origin story for Godzilla for the Japanese audience, reimagines Godzilla's origin as a rapidly evolving and mutating organism threatening Tokyo. The film explores the bureaucratic response to the crisis, blending political satire with a unique visual approach that showcases Godzilla's distinctive, nightmarish design in various evolutionary stages. Next up was a sequel to the 2014 Hollywood movie, 
Godzilla, King of the Monsters, follows the Monarch organization as they face a global crisis involving ancient titans, including Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and the three-headed King Ghidorah. As these powerful creatures vie for supremacy, humanity grapples with the decision to either coexist or combat these ancient monsters. The film combines epic monster battles with themes of environmental balance and the impact of human actions on the planet. Godzilla emerges as the Alpha Titan, restoring balance and asserting dominance in the Monsterverse. In 2021, we finally got to see Godzilla and Kong throwing down on screen once again in the next installment in the Monsterverse series, Godzilla vs. Kong. The film explores the ancient rivalry between Godzilla and Kong as they clash in a battle for supremacy. Kong, under the care of humans, is portrayed as the last hope to stand against Godzilla's destructive rampage. Godzilla vs. Kong features spectacular and visually stunning battles between the two titular monsters. The film is praised for its action sequences and the scale of the monster clashes involved, and it follows the theme of Hollywood doing a better job in closely following the source material behind the early installments in the Godzilla franchise. It became one of the biggest films of the year at the box office. Toho didn't want to miss out and continued with their own line of Godzilla movies. Godzilla Minus One is a 2023 epic kaiju film directed, written, and with visual effects by Takashi Yamazaki. It features a storyline where post-war Japan is at its lowest point when a new crisis emerges in the form of a giant monster, reflecting the horrific power of the atomic bomb. The film is praised for its engaging human stories anchoring the action, and it is considered an instant classic addition to the Godzilla franchise with terrific special effects and an entertaining story. It's interesting to see that the Japanese movies are going from strength to strength alongside the Hollywood films. Later in 2023, we got something completely fresh and separate from both the Hollywood and Toho movie franchises. Monarch Legacy of Monsters is an American TV series available on Apple TV+. The show is set after the battle between Godzilla and the Titans revealing the existence of monsters to the world. The series takes place in two different time frames, the 1950s and the present day, and explores how everyday people are affected by the unleashed monsters. The show has received positive reviews from both critics and fans, with an 87% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The Godzilla that features in this show is close to the Monsterverse version of the monster, being a modern twist on the hulking, bulky reptilian from the original series. Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is a sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong, and is directed by Adam Wingward. It features yet another epic story featuring Godzilla and Kong. While humans race to unravel their intertwined origins and connection to Skull Island's mysteries, a new threat will emerge. The film is expected to delve further into the histories of these titans, their origins, and the mysteries of Skull Island and beyond uncovering the mythic battle that helped forge these extraordinary beings and tied them to a colossal, undiscovered threat challenging their existence. The two bitter enemies look like they are going to need to set aside their differences and team up this time, to face off against a second giant ape, who is set to be the villain of the piece. <laughs> 